folks, one of our viewers in Canada contact and asked about a couple of ancient Egyptian texts that appear to look like or resemble the Bible. Once again, we have a an allusion to a copycat text. What we see is two texts, the pyramid texts and the the script of the dead that appear to look like the Psalms of the Bible. And we have another text that appears to look like Proverbs. There's the the limit the the similarities are slim and they are few, but this causes theologians some issues. Conventional theo theology denies anything, any and all connections with ancient texts. Meanwhile, when we look to see when the pyramid texts were developed and or when these texts were developed, we find that very likely the people of the Bible would have been in Egypt when these texts were developed. Proverbs, words of wisdom, and songs that the people sang. Here's the problem. For some reason, people want the Bible throughout to be an original text. Here's the dilemma we run into. Focus on this. Don't focus on your theology or your doctrine. Theology to this point in history Conventional theology has never, ever established that the people of the Bible, the Hebrew people, the Israelite people, were ever in Egypt. The Israeli people today are actually a bit aggressive. They're not the pushovers that we often think they are. They aggressively connected with the Egyptians years ago and said we own all the ruins of Egypt. We lay formal claim on all the ruins of Egypt. And when asked why, they said because our people built them while in captivity or bondage. And the Egyptian people turned to them and said you never proved you were here, therefore you weren't. And the Egyptian government, some believe, have actually damaged or destroyed or disposed of evidences that those people were ever there because it was never solidly proved. Meanwhile, those people who say that the Proverbs and the Psalms appear to be copycats of, I mean, op, op, Opet, and the Pyramid Texts are the Scripts of the Dead. They then have to explain if these are copycat texts. And there's no real offense to think that the wisdom passed down to Solomon came by way of Egypt. There's no reason to be upset to think that songs that were sung were once sung in Egypt. There's no offense there. If you're offended, your, your spiritual alignment may need checking. These people came from Egypt according to the Bible. Therefore, we would expect there to be connections. Meanwhile, since people argue that the Hebrew people were never in Egypt, if someone states that the scripts of the dead, the pyramid texts, and or Amen M. Op Opet are copycat texts or that Moses copied those texts, you have to ask them, then how did Moses access those texts? If those texts were found buried in tombs in Egypt, how did the Hebrew people copy them? The answer is, those copycat texts prove the people were in Egypt. They prove the Bible is more correct. If they copied their songs, who cares? It's just a song. The songs, the rhythms, the words came from Egypt because the people of the Bible were in Egypt when they developed those songs. 
in truth, as you will soon find out, the pyramid tax, the scripts of the dead, Amen M. Otep, are actually copycats from the Bible. And I will explain that as we move along. Don't worry about the Egyptian text. The people came out of Egypt. We expect to find similarities in Egyptian writings and Hebrew writings as a result. The question is, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And we will reveal that to you because the theologians who have buried their heads in the sand and avoided the question have missed the opportunity to bring the revelation that we're going to bring. Folks, we have actually found ruins in Egypt. We have found the last major settlement of the Hebrew people. We have found historical, scientific, and archaeological evidence of the Hebrew people in Egypt. We have found evidence of Joseph, Prime Minister of Egypt. We have found a wide array of Egyptian proofs in Egypt that the Bible is actually true. The problem is we have theologians arguing from their entrenched position in error and we have historians, pagan mystics, arguing from their entrenchment in error. What both need to do is just shake off their convictions, seek the truth, and let the truth stand. If your God, no matter which one it is, if your God cannot stand up to the truth, he's not, not that much of a God. Folks, go to SolomonSeries.com, learn things about ancient Egypt, pyramids, the Giza Plateau, tombs of Egypt, the Bible, and biblical texts as never before. The truth is coming out, it's coming your way. SolomonSeries.com. Check it out.